Air Force One plays a critical role in transporting the president and his staff across the world. And over the years, the aircraft has evolved to match the ever-expanding world leadership role. Today, we will look at the Air Force One's humble beginning, its modern implementation, and what the future aircraft are under consideration to fly the Commander-in-Chief. Hey, it's Nick here from Found and Explained. If you like what you see, then jump on and subscribe. Air Force One's story began in 1933 with the Douglas Dolphin, an amphibious plane owned by the US Navy and designated the RD-2. It was fitted with a luxury upholstery for four passengers and a small separate sleeping compartment. While it only had a range of 601 nautical miles, there are no actual reports that any president actually flew in the plane between 1933 and its retirement in 1939. When World War II broke out, the presidential transport was upgraded to the Boeing 314, a Pan Am operated flying boat called the Dixie Clipper. It flew then-President Franklin D. Roosevelt from Washington to Casablanca, Morocco, over the Atlantic on a journey of 5,500 miles in three legs. Planes were favoured over ship transport thanks to the U-boat's genuine threat in the deep Atlantic during the war. While other military aircraft were used in the years following, the first aircraft to actually hold the name of Air Force One was the Lockheed VC 121A LO constellation named Columbine 2. The Lockheed Constellation, world's largest land-based transport plane, prepares to make its first public flight. It could fly its VIP passenger to a range of 4,700 nautical miles, and it was used from 1962 by President Eisenhower to the beginning of the jet age. In 1959, three specially built Boeing 707-120s, jet aircraft, also known as VC-137 Stratoliners, were added to the Air Force's VIP transport fleet. The VC-137s were powerful additions, flying 7,610 miles and could carry up to 22 VIP passengers and act as a flying command post. They could fly twice as far in the same amount of time as the previous Lockheed Constellations. These three original Boeing 707s operated for a president until 1962 with the purchase of the first true presidential jet, a custom-made Boeing C-137 Stratoliner called the SAM-2600 was built for $8 million. This was also the first plane to actually have the famous baby blue presidential color scheme. SAM 2600 would be used from 1962 to 1998, although it served as a backup aircraft to a new VC-137 design in 1972. This new aircraft, called SAM 2700, would serve until 2001 as the de facto presidential transport aircraft. In 1985, however, the United States Air Force issued a request for proposal for two wide-body aircraft with a minimum three engines and an unrefueled range of 6,000 miles. Boeing entered the contest with its Boeing 747 and McDonnell Douglas with a DC-10, with the Reagan administration going for the bigger order of two identical 747s to replace the aging 707s he was currently using. This Boeing 747 VC-25A would be formatted to carry 26 crew members and 76 VIP passengers, including the president and all of their staff to a range of 6,800 nautical miles. This was no ordinary Boeing 747, however, as it had been formatted to survive an EMP attack and also act as the flying center of government of the executive branch. It also has the ability to deploy its own stairs in case it lands at an airport without stair transportation. Two such Boeing 747 Air Force Ones have been constructed at the cost of $325 million each and entered use in 2001. From here, the Air Force has been considering several options for next generation of Air Force One aircraft. 
At the time, the government wasn't opposed to looking overseas to Airbus with its Airbus A380 platform, which has around 40% more interior space than the Boeing 747. Although politics would have prevented anyone but an American manufacturer from making a real bid for Air Force One, it was certainly an interesting proposal. Another hot contender on the table was the Boeing 777X. The next generation aircraft would have the highest range of any presidential aircraft and have the advantage of several new features. It would lose some floor space compared to the Boeing 747, but it would have a range of 11,645 nautical miles, enough to fly almost anywhere in the world. In 2016, proposals to build a new aircraft from scratch were rejected, thanks to the enormous cost, and a new plan to retrofit two Boeing 747-8 Intercontinentals that were never delivered to a Russian airline were put on the table. These new planes were flight tested, but never delivered to the bankrupt airline. With a few modifications of the layout, wiring and EMP protection, these planes could replace the current Boeing 747s and begin a new presidential transport generation. The 747-8 Intercontinentals will have a minimum range of 7,730 nautical miles, although likely a lot more thanks to the smaller passenger capacity of around 100 VIP travelers and extra fuel tanks. But the story doesn't end here though. The Air Force is also looking beyond the next generation into a supersonic future. They have proposed three different firms, Exosonic, Hermes, and Boom, to build a supersonic Air Force One that can transport the president across the country in a matter of minutes, not hours. Boom. The current leader in the supersonic race with the only existing prototype would develop a 30-seater VIP supersonic transport that can fly a range of 4,500 nautical miles at a speed of Mach 2.2. The first aircraft is expected to fly by 2029, but once proven, a presidential transport is not far. Although at this point, if you start to wonder if the Air Force has considered other crazy proposals like the Elon Musk spaceship that can reportedly reach anywhere in the world in only 45 minutes. Although perhaps even that is a bit too far-fetched for even the most powerful job in the world. Thanks so much for watching today's video. It has been a great project to work on in recognition of the 2020 election, and I hope now after watching, you are more clued in with the journey of the US Air Force One aircraft. And if you enjoyed the video, then I suggest you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.